Hello, my sewing friends. This is Friday Sews. I'm Jen, and this is my sewing room. And I have spent many a happy hour in here this week. Ugh, I love to sew, and I love it when I can take time to do that. And it's, I've really had a good week of sewing. Got some things to tell you about. I came in here this morning thinking I need a nightgown. So here's the thing. I have two nightgowns that I've made that I love and they are kind of in rotation. And I mean, I only wear them when I sleep. I don't like get up in the morning and go drink coffee in my nightgown. What I do is I have clothes in my closet that are like pajamas that I can put on. I can throw them on over my head and then go out and then drink my coffee and and uh, you know, do my morning thing. And then if I wanna go out during, you know, another part of the day, then I can put real clothes on <laughs> and do that. One of the things I love about one of them is that it's 100% cotton shirting. No, it's not 100%, it's like 97% cotton shirting with like 3% lycra in it. And I love to catch my foot in it and then pull it down when I'm laying in bed. And that way, you know, it doesn't bunch up. I love that. So I thought maybe if I made something out of knit, that would be really comfy and, you know, I can hook my foot in it and <laughs> pull it down. Uh, so I have, like I say, I have two nightgowns. One is made from a sheet and that's really comfy and soft and I love that one. And that one is this one, um, this pattern, which is McCall's 3400. It's from 1987. I made this one and it has this back on it which is wrapped and it makes it so nice because you know it's fairly loose fitting and you can just pull it over your head and you can make it from a woven and not have to worry that it's not going to fit you. So I had this and I knew I had this pattern and I thought well I knew I had this knit. So this is um, a knit that I thrifted from Goodwill and there were a lot of yards of it. I can't even, probably, well, not that many. I guess there were like three, about three yards of, the, of it. And it's a very soft, pretty knit. And it's almost like eyelet. You can kind of see. So it's got that little pattern going through it. And it's not heavy, but it's nice. It's like a poly cotton knit. So I went ahead and I cut that out this morning. And that's not going to be anything fancy. It's just going to be pretty and comfortable. So that, I'm glad that I did that because now I'll get it done and it'll go in my closet and I won't be thinking about nightgowns anymore. I also want to make a cardigan. I have talked about this in the past. And so when I was in here thinking, yeah, I want to take care of that. I have this beautiful, oh, it feels divine. It's just, this is the kind of thing I love. I'm pretty sure this is 100% cotton and it's just cotton interlock and it's just white. Just your basic white cotton interlock. And this is what I want to use to make a cardigan. I love the Marlowe cardigan. I think it's by True Bias. And I don't want to buy that pattern. Okay, here's the thing. I have many patterns. I have so many patterns. I bet you, I bet you I have at least 500 patterns. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have at least that many maybe more, but at least that many. And there is no excuse for me to go and buy a pattern. I do buy patterns. I'm given patterns. I find patterns, you know, I thrift patterns, you know, I, it's not like I never buy a pattern, but I buy them cheap. I, I never spend more than about $2 for a pattern unless it's Vogue. And in that case, I never spend more than $6. So as much as the Marlowe is exactly what I want, I decided I would look through my stash and just see what I have. I have McCall's 9529 from 1985. It's a Beverly Hills pattern, which if you were alive in 1985 and you were more than maybe 10 or 15 years old, you probably remember it's Camp Beverly Hills. This actually even has the iron-on transfer in it for this sweatshirt. How crazy is that? I've had this pattern a long time. I'm pretty sure I bought it new. And so it has this cardigan right here. And that's pretty close to what I want. 
it doesn't have the band on the bottom and it's way longer than what I want to make, but that's easy. I can cut it off shorter. I can put a band on the bottom. I can put a band around the front, which I think I would like to do. It kind of looks like there's a band there, but it's not. I think it's just a facing that's been turned inside and stitched, but that's a piece of cake to be honest. And then uh, cuffs. So I, I want to make those changes, but I don't want to cut into that beautiful white 100% cotton interlock. Well, I also thrifted, the same time I thrifted that pink cotton, I thrifted this blue cotton. This kind of looks like denim, but this I think is probably a poly cotton, but it is interlock. So that just means it's a heavier, um, like older t-shirts were made and some t-shirts now, but you know, it's, it's got some weight to it. Um, it's not too thick, but it just, it just feels nice. It's just got, it's soft and it's, you know, not too heavyweight. So I'm going to use this to try and make what I want from this McCall's pattern. And uh, if it works, then I'll do it in the white. But that is the plan. So that's coming up. Um, some of you have been asking about my tracing paper. This is a roll of my tracing paper. It comes in a 50 yard roll. It's 36 inches wide and I love it. I've been using it since uh, probably about 1990 when I was making wedding gowns. I love it because it's so wide. I think it is a, the widest you can get, but I love this width um, because you can use less of it, to be honest. You can um, fit a lot of pattern pieces on it, you know, really effectively. And I save, <laughs> I save my scraps of paper as well as my scraps of fabric um, because sometimes I'll have like a little back facing piece or a front facing piece or a collar or something like that that I know I can fit on a smaller piece of this that was just left over. But um, this is made by a company called Bian Fang and I get it at Amazon and at Dick Blick and I'm always shopping around to find the best price, but Amazon is usually probably about the best. And I try and get it a couple of rolls at a time, but I've put a link to it down in the description box so that it's in a list of a lot of my favorite notions and they're all linked to an Amazon site, which is my Amazon store basically. Um, so you can click on that and it'll take you right to that if you're interested in that. And uh, I love this stuff because you can, I mean, obviously you can see through it, but it's heavier than tissue, but not as heavy as copy paper. So to be honest, for a PDF pattern, for any pattern, this is why I trace them off because I can work with this and it's not going to pull apart like tissue would, but it's also not gonna dull my pins as much as copy paper. Speaking of printed, patterns, PDF patterns, someone else asked me, how do you get them printed on such a big sheet? Well, I used PDF plotting and I just happened to get two patterns uh, recently. I bought two Love Notions patterns. I know I said, I don't, I don't want to buy patterns. These were on sale and I'm, you know, working on fitting pants, uh, trying to make pants that fit me. And I saw the duet trousers, so I grabbed those. And then while, because it was on sale, I grabbed the um, Hawthorne jacket, which is so cool because it zips kind of like uh, diagonally. And I okay, editing Jen here. I have no idea what I was talking about. I need a functioning brain, clearly. Okay, first of all, the Hawthorne jacket is a free pattern put out by the Mood Society. And the Alba jacket is the one with the like bias zipper kind of thing going on. And I have that pattern, that's by Sinclair Patterns. The one that I had printed <laughs> that's actually in the box is the Whistler hoodie from Love Notions. Yeah, like I say, if you have seen my brain, then please let me know. Any number of people lately will tell you I really do need a functioning brain. So, yeah, I know I I just said I don't want to buy patterns and I can probably, you know, adapt a pattern I already have. Well, sometimes I do buy patterns. 
So those were a good deal. Um, they were under $10 each. So I sent them off to PDF Plotting. I love that place. I love those people. They will take your order and get it back to you within just a couple of days. And it's always really well done. I've not had any problems with the printing or anything like that. So I can highly recommend them. They are in Virginia. They're in Richmond, Virginia. But it doesn't matter where you live in the U.S. Um, you can have things printed there and then they'll just ship them to you in a box that looks like this. Kind of cool, huh? This week on Tuesday, Tuesday night, I was finished with what I was sewing. I was finishing something up. I can't even remember now what it was, but uh, I had a little bit of time left with uh, my girlfriends, uh, my sewing sisters. So I grabbed um, some sheep for the nativity sets that I'm making and I made two little sheep. They're so cute. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And this is shearling. I have run out of the shearling. So I went over to Hobby Lobby this week and I couldn't find actual shearling, but I found this, which is a minky and it kind of looks like sheep. I think we're gonna, we're gonna just, we're just gonna go with it. I also made a camel. I'm not as happy with the camel, but you know, he's not as cute as a sheep, I have to say. But um, this is a micro suede that I had thrifted from the Scrap Exchange in Durham, North Carolina. If you ever get a chance, please go there. It's a fabulous place. It's like a thrift store for crafts, all manner of crafts and hobby stuff. So anyway, it's funny. Once you do one of these, then you're, you're good. It's like you, you know, it's easy to figure the rest out and it's not hard to do them like one after another, but I've only done a camel and a couple of sheep so far. So I, if I come in here every night and I make myself sit down and make a couple of these things, then I will have them done by Christmas, which is the plan. This week's topic for Friday Sews is the craziest thing you've ever sewn, preferably a costume. Mm-hmm because Halloween is coming up. Well, uh, I don't remember any costumes that I've made that were crazy. But one costume I do remember, it was pretty crazy. I didn't make it, my mom made it, but I remember it. I remember it vividly. Back in the 1960s, there was a television show called The Flying Nun and Sally Field starred in it. And the flying nun was a nun in, I think she was in Puerto Rico. She wore a, what is it called? A wimple, the headpiece that nuns wear. And it was like, it was a hat and it had like wings that came out and came down <laughs> like airplane wings. And she would go like this and she would catch the wind. And because she was so small and light, she could fly. Kind of cool, huh? So as I recall, my mom made me like a dress out of some white fabric, maybe a sheet. I have no idea. And she made me the hat. It was so cool. Well, the wings kept wanting to droop and fall off. I think they were cardboard attached to some kind of a thing she made. And I remember my dad, he was home for something. And, you know, I was saying, mom, they keep falling down. And he goes, well, I'll just get my staple gun out. And I'm pretty sure he did. And he stayed those things so that they stood out and it was the coolest costume I was I was so happy I think I was nine or ten. Oh, I just I don't know if everybody thought I had the coolest costume but I certainly thought I had the coolest costume not really crazy but definitely cool and when my dad said he was gonna staple gun that hat I thought get that thing off my head here you go <laughs> I did not want him staple gunning that hat while it was on my head. So anyway, definitely memorable. So let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're up to this weekend. If you have Halloween plans, if you're going to dress up and be some kind of crazy character, let's talk about that. And have you ever made a really crazy costume? Oh, I'd love to hear about that. And if you would like to see a playlist of all of my Friday shows where you could be entertained for hours and hours, yes, just check right over here. Have a great weekend and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.